Isn't money what tithing is about? Isn't money the center point of tithing? I would say no. Tithing was not just intended to take care of those three people groups in the Old Testament, but tithing was also set up to develop trust in God's people. Tithing was set up to help the people of God trust in His will above their own. Tithing was set up so that they would, even though they thought they may need that 10%, that they would see how God would provide aside from that 10%. That tithing was that free gift. Now when we start to imply, apply the same principle in the New Testament, 10% probably doesn't seem too bad. Because 10%, like I said, is a response of trust. And when we start to look at where our trust level is in the New Test by the New Testament standards, well, what is God asking for in the New Testament? How much do you trust God? Maybe that would be a better question. 10%? 5%? Three percent? One percent? How much do you trust God that He will take care of all of your needs? How much do you trust God that when He promises to take care of us, that He will? See, when we start to focus on the money aspect of it, when we start to focus on the amount that it happens to be, we replace God with money. And Jesus is very clear of the, about this. In Matthew chapter 6, he says, No one can serve two masters. Either he will hate the one and love the other, or he will be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve both God and money. And when we put the checkbook first, when we put the bank account first, when we put our net worth first, we aren't taking that step of faith. And trust in God. We're not taking that step of faith and being confident that God's will is greater than our will. See, giving is not just about money. Giving is not just about how we want to make things run. It's not about if the sermon was good or bad. It's not about whether or not the hymns were good or bad. It's not about the, the beautiful church building. Giving isn't about that. Giving is about that trusting relationship in God. And letting go and saying, God, I trust you more than I trust this money, more than I trust my job. What's amazing is God has never failed to disappoint. And not always does He bless us in the way we expect. Not always does God bless us with $100 when we need $100. But sometimes He provides for it in different ways. Sometimes He provides for it in ways we won't even, even, even imagine. We ask the question, God, where are you? And He delivers. Even when we have been unfaithful, He is faithful to us. God doesn't want us to give just because we have to give. He wants us to give because we desire it. Were you listening to our epistle today? 2 Corinthians 9. Each man should give what he has decided in his heart to give. Not reluctantly or out of compulsion. For God loves a cheerful giver. God wants us to give because we do trust. God desires that we give not just our money, but our time, our talents, our treasures. All those. Because we have faith. That He will take care. That we have faith that the God who created our world will also continue to sustain us each and every day. And what's amazing is even, even beyond that, God can, still continues to bless us. Just a verse later in 2 Corinthians, and God is able to make all grace abound to you. So in all things, at all, at all times, having all that you need, you will abound in every good work. God will bless our, the way we bless others. When we give to others, God will give unto us. And if, if you don't like Paul's words, consider Jesus' own words in Luke chapter 6. Give, and it will be given to you. A good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over, will be poured into your lap. 
For with the measure you use, it will be measured unto you. What a beautiful promise that God makes to us. That no matter how little or how great we have to give, that God will bless that amount. No matter how often our trust wavers from God, He'll never stop giving to us. See, giving is not about money. It's not about our time. It's not about the gifts that He's blessed us with already. It's about that ultimate trust that God has a greater plan for our lives than we can imagine. That before we were born, before our parents had conceived of us, God already had a plan for our lives. He had a plan to bless us and a plan to care for us. Before we were born, God intended to shower us with His love. And we know that. We know that so clearly. Because we have that promise of eternal life. We have that gift of the Savior who entered into our world. Who took on the flesh as man. Who gave His life on the cross. But through that death, paid for our sins. Who paid and made us treasured children. Beloved children of God. So whether or not you're able to give a dollar, 50 cents, 10 cents. God will use that gift. God will use that gift as a blessing. He'll use that gift to carry out His ministry. He'll use that gift to take care of the poor. He'll use that gift to take care of the needy. God will use that gift of your money, even if it's a nickel, a penny, to share His love with others. Giving is not about the money. It's about the heart. May our hearts always trust that God has graciously given us to us so that we may give to others. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, we do thank You. We thank You for the many abundant gifts You have blessed us with. Most importantly, Your death on the cross. Because through that death, we have payment for our sins. Through Your resurrection, we look forward to life eternal with You. Lord, help us to always be willing servants to share Your gifts. Help us not to get caught up in our checkbooks, in our savings accounts, in our, in our stocks and bonds, Lord. But let us trust let us give our ultimate trust in You. That what, you, that what we give in Your name, You will bless. That what we give in Your name, You will cause to abound and share Your blessings to the ends of the earth. Lord, may we be wise stewards of these gifts. That as we use these gifts, that they may carry out Your love. That they may take care of the poor and the needy. Those who have not heard Your Gospel. That they may be brought to that loving faith. Lord, may our hearts always be turned to You that gift, that unestimable gift of Your blood that brought us righteousness. In Your name we pray. Amen.